and welcome to another edition of Thoughts of the Roundtable with me, Matt Rebar. And me, Paul Lauks. And we are back again. It's been a few weeks. Yeah, it's been, I think our last episode was February 1st, so we're kind of like a mid-February review. <laughs> well, also, um, part of that is my fault because I decided to rip apart my bathroom and retile everything and put in a new tub. So it's an adult and experience that's uh, keeping yeah. me busy. I love that you're putting in the subway tile, right? It looks so good. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you, you have, I love those bathrooms that like the wall indents so that you could have like your the soap niches. and shampoo. Yeah, the niches or whatever they're called. I love them. It looks so good. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so last time we talked about, I remember we were talking about the uh, GameStock thing. GameStock. <laughs> as as I just call it. But um so we, we should probably give a little update on that. And basically the update is that it kind of just went away from what it seemed like. Mm-hmm. Right now it's at about um last time I checked today, it was at forty dollars. And if you remember it was at like um I think the highest was what, four hundred some? Yeah, it and was up there. It was the basically making um a couple of those hedge fund people uh basically sell off. I think they ended up losing Billions and billions. Uh, I think it was nineteen billion that the one capital firm lost, and they're wow. only worth thirteen billion, so they lost more <laughs> than their entire company was worth. Um, so there was that, and but they got a bail. But basically, what happened is, is um, Robin Hood um, halted trading of it, mm-hmm. and the government bailed them out. So basically, um, we we you know backed up the billionaires and beat down the little guy again once they realized that did you see by the way there was some guy i think he was on um cnbc or something like that and it was some billionaire hedge fund guy and he was literally sobbing on there (laughs) like literally crying and basically saying like no it's not it's not fair that these people are able to do this it's like (laughs) that that's literally like it's not our fault that they did it the right way and Mm -hmm. just tricked you and um yeah, he was literally sobbing, but they they won. They ended up getting bailed mm. out. So, um, but uh, have you been following that Doge coin or whatever? I have. Is it is it still on the rise? Well, the, I mean, yes, but the thing is, it was literally fractions of a penny, <laughs> but it has gone up like hundreds of percent. So it's like, I don't even know if it's literally a cent yet, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but. And I, I doubt that it'll ever be anything, but mm. Bitcoin is over fifty thousand dollars, which is absurd. But basically, I don't know how you feel about that. That basically the billionaires won; they got bailed out, they got mm-hmm. backed up by their friends. And um, honestly, I think what oh, ooh, sorry about that. Ooh. I think what Robin Hood <laughs> did was probably one of the crappiest things I've mm-hmm. ever honestly seen. And I don't even know how that's illegal. They have that huge class action lawsuit mm-hmm. um, against them now for all their because they literally just manipulated it, like so no one could trade anymore. Yeah. And um, I'm not into that. I don't trade stocks or I don't do any of that. <laughs> so I never really got too wrapped up in it, but I think it's complete bullshit. And it proves that, you know, even if you're a little guy, even if you find a way to win, you're always going to lose. So mm-hmm. it was disappointing in the end, but it, I mean, it is what it is. That's how, that's how these yeah. things go. Sorry. It was a little tangent, but I was very No, I think you summed it up really time. well. Um, the sociologist of me, I think what's so interesting about this whole thing is that it, it proves that, Wall Street is a casino. It's a sham. It's it really it's is though. fake in a way. And you know, to have these billionaires say, "How dare people exploit the system that we've been exploiting?" is and just hypocrites one hundred and one. They've been doing it <laughs> like exploiting the exact way they've been doing. It. You know what also is bullshit is how politicians are allowed to trade on the stock market. That should yeah. never be allowed at mm-hmm. all. I have many problems with the modern government system and that is one of them especially like you know you get reports all the time of senators who have these secret meetings and then suddenly their stock portfolio changes overnight yeah you're like come on like nancy pelosi stop being so obvious about yeah i mean it's both sides sides. yeah so i mean it's they know that they have insider knowledge of what's coming Mm -hmm. with governmental things and they'll dump stock or buy stock all the time when they know stuff is coming I think another huge takeaway, too, is, you know, these this investment hedge fund, what they do is they put money that basically they make bets that businesses are going to fail. So they make this bet on GameStop that they're going to, you know, basically kind of buy these shares, but they're not like buying the shares, which is so weird to me. It's like they're borrowing shares. Yeah, they're like borrowing them. Um, And with the hope that when they have to cash them in, they'll actually make money off of the deal. And that to me is so shady, you know, from the standpoint of like. Obviously, business 101, I'm aware that businesses are going to fail. 
Um, but to be you're basically rooting for businesses yeah. to fail to well, make it, money it, off of it is it hurts these businesses too and yeah. basically chokes them to death. Um, I, I just think way. it's so unethical. I think it's so wrong. Um, you know, if, if there was a way for them to make money off the success of companies, I think that is great. You know, that's kind of what Wall Street is, um, and that's kind of what these these small guys did for a bit, right? They kind of made money off of this whole thing for a bit. But yeah, to be betting against companies, man, I I just think I don't know. I don't want to be a philosopher, but <laughs> you know, my my ethics professor right now. But to me, it's just so horrendous. And so no, I don't feel bad that you know these hedge funds lost all this money and that they're sobbing on national TV. It's like you know, that's good that you are in that position. Like screw all you, of man. Wall Street. Just it just bothers me. I and agree. I, it's just because it's just it, it's just gambling essentially. Mm-hmm. And I hate that our economy is tied so much into it, but I mean that's, I mean that's kind of just what you get with the system we have. But what's have even set up. What, what's even funnier, you know, you have this, you have the Wall Street that's kind of like a casino, right? But then you have our currency, which isn't based on anything. You know, we're not our money is not based on any gold or any riches. It's just printed money. Are you a bring back the gold standard guy? I mean, I'm not necessarily bring back the gold standard guy, but like. You look at the our economy, and it's a mess. It's 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 fake. It's you know people always talk about like well look at all the jobs. And my big thing is look at the quality of the jobs. You know because you can have two million bad paying, no benefits, part time jobs that like will crush people into poverty. You know that's not going to do any good, right? The problem with with capitalism in general is it, it's a great system in theory, but you're really hedging your bets on the greed of the the top the top corporations that basically run the government mm-hmm. and if the greed wasn't a thing capitalism would be fantastic but it is so you're kind of balance it's kind of a balancing act with trying to you know manage the greed of these companies that basically control the lobbyists and and borderline the government itself so i had a thought that i want to know your opinion on you know, back when in the early 1900s with capitalism, you know, obviously there was rampant poverty. But was there, I, I don't know, do you think that there's been more greed since the earlier days of capitalism? Mm, uh, no, I, more, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that if there's been more or less. Uh, we have a lot more protections now over the years that consumers mm-hmm. have. Um, we have, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of new laws that have been acted to protect um you know the middle class and the the you know the more common people that so that that is good and um because i mean back in the early 1900s good lord it was just it was basically (laughs) little kids losing their fingers in the warehouses and yeah and so i mean there's that so companies are handcuffed a little bit there Mm -hmm. but i mean every they're always going to be greedy in some in some way, these come. I, I don't whether there's more or not. Yeah. I don't know. I do wonder. But, and this is kind of funny because you know me. I'm very liberal, but you know we've we've there's more non-religious people than ever. You know, back then, you know, maybe was there more of a quote religious norm when it came to capitalism that you shouldn't be greedy in a way. Oh God, no. You I think, don't think I, no. I, that's something that I think about. It might have been wonder, worse back then. Have people pulled away from? institutions that have kind of were anti-greed like you know to me religion a big thing is like don't be greedy right <laughs> don't covet your neighbor don't covet your neighbor's wife don't covet your neighbor's goods and so yeah, by stripping any, that is, away when is, any, when is any ceo ever followed his morals i mean to, well you know. i'm gonna say well look at general ford ford paid his employees fantastically he was known for like really ushering in like workers and like i, I mean I think mean, there's plenty of old, or Rockefeller. Well, I, you know, I sh- I don't know my research. Wasn't on Rockefeller. Rockefeller a douche? I I was just about to say he might have been a douche. <laughs> so X nay that on my evidence sheet. But <laughs> point point B saying, I mean, CEOs are making more money than ever. That we know. Elon Musk, uh, Bezos, uh, Bill Gates. You know, these people are making money that like even Rockefeller would be like, oh my god, right? But the thing is, too, Rockefeller did invest in the community. I mean, you look at Cleveland and like. The gardens, the cultural gardens, I think he invested in. He invested in a ton of, like, the museum area, I believe. Again, don't quote me exactly. But, I, I mean, look at just Jeff Bezos. His, the amount that he's donated is, like, 0.0%. Or, it's yeah, but he so also treats Amazon low. employees like crap. 
Exactly. And, like, you know, even Ford, I mean, Ford had, he gave him the best that he I've could heard offer. horror stories about working for Amazon. Like, it's oh, just yeah. awful. Dude, have you, oh, this is kind of in the same realm. Mm-hmm. Have you seen all the, there's some uh, uh, Amazon warehouse, I think it's in Louisiana. And the, they're uh, unionizing. They're try- what? Aren't they unionizing right now? They're trying to, but the crazy things that Amazon is doing to try to break up their Ugh. their union talks, like they will, um, the craziest, the, like obviously there's the basic, like they'd hang posters in the bathroom about why it's not good to unionize, you know, how you lose your <laughs> health insurance, and the, that kind of oh basic stuff. Oh my God. Stuff. But Imagine Western, like sitting to go to the bathroom and you like have that poster in your face and you're like, oh, you're, you're like, taking I a hate dump my and life. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're trying to poop and there's just a non-unionized poster in front of you. But no, the the craziest thing I heard is that um, there there was a group of Amazon workers who would like um, they had like a picket line, mm-hmm. and they were handing out information about how to un- how why how to unionize and why they should unionize like mm-hmm. the Amazon employees, and they stationed themselves at a stoplight right outside the Amazon warehouse, so the employees would stop, and you know they'd talk to them and get the pamphlets or everything, and Amazon convinced the city to always make that light green. And so they people never had the chance to stop and talk to the the unionizers. Wow, <laughs> that is so like it's diabolical. Crazy. That's like Disney villain, it's, dude. It is. <laughs> I mean, but that's the kind of shit that happened in the early 1900s too. All the union mm-hmm. busters. I mean, those. Well, unions were strongest post World War II. Correct. And when they were strongest, the wages were at their best. I think it came out to about twelve dollars in today's money an hour. Was like the average, and now we're, de- we're like the minimum wage is down to seven. And have you ever heard of the Big Mac index? Yes, and it's so explain it for people. I think it's so crazy. And at least I, I hopefully we're on the we're on the same page here. But it's the inflation rate of the Big Mac is versus that what, minimum wage yes. versus minimum wage, and how minimum wage hasn't gone up since like two thousand what two thousand nine? I think it was. Oh, maybe. But, and even then, um, it was like what like ten cents. Yeah. Um, but the Big Mac, the Big Mac's has, doubled. <laughs> it's, no, it's like seventy-two percent inflation since. Yeah, since it's, and yeah, it's insane. The Big Mac index. I read about that the other day, but because um, everyone always like, you know, fifteen dollars an hour will uh, spike prices, and in some some areas it will. It definitely will. Mm-hmm. But like inflation's been happening anyway. So. Yeah. The point is the argument that like if we don't raise minimum wage, things are gonna. <laughs> get more expensive I mean, plot twist re- they've been getting more expensive like, i mean in reality it's it's putting a band-aid on a broken bone i think i've said yeah. that before like it's mm-hmm. not the end-all be-all and mm-hmm. honestly in some areas it's probably not even a good idea but i mean there no one else is doing anything else we're not working on health care we're not mm-hmm. working on making school affordable so we don't really have any other choice i mean these are things that if you were actually working on like if we were trying to make health care cheaper if we we're trying to make you know job training more affordable housing more affordable then really the minimum wage, you know, a fifteen dollar minimum wage thing would kind of die off because it wouldn't be as prudent as it is now with all of these things just getting out of control. But we don't want to work on any of that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, they don't want to work on all of the other things that are making the fifteen dollars an hour mandatory. But also, they don't want to talk about raising the wage. It's just they don't want to do it. Nobody wants to do anything. Is Another thing saying. too that I get kind of annoyed about is people when they're like, you know, they use the example of the McDonald's employee with minimum wage, and they go. Well, if you have minimum wage, you got, you're going to have robots doing the work. And it's like, shouldn't we celebrate that we as a society have advanced so much that, like, menial labor and tasks can be handled by automation? Like, the also, that's not going to happen. Open up. I'm just saying, like, you know, if we lived in a society where, like, a lot of, you know, mundane, hardworking tasks can be done by automation, that means that there's more people to do more, you know, awesome, inventive things, creative mm-hmm. things. I, I Listen, I, I, I get a little creeped out by robots sometimes, but <laughs> the idea that, like, we can live in a society where, like, we're, in, we're continuously enriching ourselves because of our access to autom- automation and uh, automatons and all that, I think it's great. Also, that's not going to happen. You're never going to see McDonald's run by robots entirely, so... Well, no, I mean, you'd have that. to have, like, a manager and, like, technicians on site or whatever, but... I'm just saying, I mean, like, the process of fast food is not... You don't need, like, a sous chef in McDonald's to get it done. <laughs> I was a McDonald's sous chef. Oh, were you? Oh, yeah, in high school, right? I worked at McDonald's three years. I cooked burgers. You know what? Honestly, it really wasn't that bad of a job. I quite enjoyed it, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. It wasn't but bad. It's hard work. I mean, you're on your feet. You're running around. Well, 
the problem was I was working with all my high school buddies. It was like oh, all my well, baseball just friends. Jacking I was like, off the whole time. <laughs> that was basically me, me cooking burgers with my with my with my dudes. I'm like, okay, whatever, this is fine. So I also want to add, you know, Texas, what's happening right now in Texas. For those who are unaware, Texas is having historically snowy, cold winter. You know, the winter storm's crashing. And I did some research because I'm like, what is the issue? And I learned this week that Texas has its own power grid. Yeah, you didn't so know that? The re- I did not know this. Well, maybe I did and I forgot, but I, I don't think I They're privatized, I believe. It's privatized. And here's where I, this is, it goes back to earlier, kind of what we're talking about. This company that's privatized the majority of Texas Texas's electricity, they've been told for years that their infrastructure needs updating, it needs winterizing, it needs to Hold be on refreshed. Just on that point, mm-hmm. it's it's of note that the entire U.S. power grid sucks. We <laughs> the entire thing. On that side, that's not, I'm not even a joke. That the yeah. entire thing sucks. They're just the worst of the worst, basically. Well, because they're privatized, and so. In their eyes, they need to make a profit. The most they want to squeeze out every penny they can, uh, you know, versus you know maybe a federal. You know, it's a little slow. It's you know, yada yada. Things are behind, but this this is a different agenda, right? And it's insane to me. I'm like, how how Texas? Why this is like? I'm so pissed. I, I I'm so pissed about it. And and how are they going to change that? How are they going to regulate that? How are they going to like put in? New law and now, on that, and and now of course here comes all the people like Ted Cruz. He was talking about like all these wind turbines that all the Democrats want. They froze up and they don't work. And then he t- like tweeted some picture of a frozen wind turbine, but it was one from like Siberia from like a couple <laughs> years ago. And this guy, he, like everything he can do, he'll. And the the best part of, and that's kind of turned out on his head a little bit is Ted Cruz is obviously notoriously horrifically against basically any sort of COVID relief, like mm-hmm. literally anything. And uh, I think it was today. He's like, "Why isn't Biden giving us giving us relief? Why isn't he helping us?" It's like, you literally don't want to help anybody. <laughs> why do you want it? Why do you, why do you care? The best part of the whole lie about the windmills weren't windmills made in like Denmark, and Denmark's <laughs> way colder than Texas. So if it worked for Denmark, it'll work for Texas. <laughs> I mean, that's that's not even like I I don't know how much of the power comes from the wind turbines I truly don't it's so small but that's I, the I thing it's, it's so small lot. and and what's even better Paul the windmills are performing better than they expected under these conditions the problem is the gas all the gas like the pipeline something froze up so they can't get the gas out is apparently the issue I thought it was their electrical grid that was having the issue I think it's like was a, that I wrong think with it's that? a whole I think it's a few things maybe but from what I read it had to do with like the something with the gas, something with freezing with the gas. So <laughs> I mean, everyone loves privatized stuff, but man, that listen, I don't. These, what these, name listen, one thing on. privatized in America that's working right now? These these companies, um, well, airlines doing okay. I think they oh, they oh, have no. thoughts on that, but um, uh, was it where was I going with this? The, when you privatize an entire like you know uh, sector like that. You kind of have to rely on these companies because the the thing is, is obviously the maintenance is going to cost money. The people are going to cost money. The mm-hmm. upkeep, the updates, all that's going to cost money. And if you privatize it, you're basically hedging all of your bets that these companies will take some of their dear profits and push it into these things, which are mandatory. They're not. It's which capitalism. They won't, they won't do. They won't. They are do penny it. pinching. They are going to exploit. They are going to do the bare minimum. You know. It's like, you know, you have two ways of looking at it. You and it bites them in someone, the ass every time. Yeah. It, it bites them in the ass every time, and they never change. They will mm-hmm. do this again mm-hmm. and again and again. It's like you have two types of people who are going to, like, let's say you need a fence built. You tell the one guy, the one guy goes, I'll build your fence for $2,000. The other guy goes, you give me 1000 and I'll see what I can do. Who's going to build the better fence? <laughs> it's going to be the guy who says, here's the 2000 here's why you need to pay that much. Versus the guy who says, pay me a thousand for the whole project. I'm gonna squeeze every penny and give you a bad fence. Also, um, did you hear, uh, see that mayor? I guess somewhere in Texas, smaller town. But he basically told, I think he told people like it's sink or swim. Like no one owes you mm-hmm. anything. A few and people, few politicians from Texas have said this. Really? Well, yes. the one was he goes, these power companies don't owe you anything. I'm like, bitch, I pay my my bill every <laughs> month. Yes, they do owe me something. <laughs> But, like, I'm sorry, are we a modern society or are we, like, you know, 
a 1500s colony of animals that like we're all going to be individual and we're not going to help each other and we're not going to you know at some point like when are they going to just like admit that like you know what we're not a society we are just a bunch of people looking out for our own self interest at all times cuz that's Basically. what it feels like with this whole situation and i i, I mean you know, I've been well, very let's be curious. This will this will happen again. They'll, they're not so. going to update these things. It'll happen again. Well, I was Guaranteed. I've been wondering. You know, they say that Texas will be the next state to go blue. That's kind of the prediction. That they've like, said that for a long time. I they don't have. I, the thing I don't is, know there, either. There, there's there's pockets there's pockets of Texas that that. I mean, Texas is always going to be Texas, mm-hmm. but I mean, Austin is obviously very blue. Um, Houston, da- Houston, I mean, all the cities. Yeah, Dallas is not. I don't know if Dallas will ever really go blue, but um, I don't know. Well, I don't they talk about voter suppression. They talk a lot about the voter suppression. So if they can do what they did to Georgia and Texas, who knows? I mean, it could be who close. Knows? But I do wonder if this situation, what's going to be the fallout? Because there has to be Georgia a fallout. Was, do you think Georgia was a fluke, or do you think that'll stay blue for a while? I genuinely think it depends on how these two senators do and what Biden does. I think it depends on, you know, if they continue to push for voter registration, if they continue to push for new registration and and old registration. It's all, it depends. I mean, the votes were so close, man. I, I mean, they really were. And you can say, well, with the Trump thing, and that didn't help the Republican candidates. You could say that that's a possibility. I mean, people don't but, for, people forget that Trump still got seventy four million votes, which is I know insane. that's insane, insane, <laughs> insane. So, um, South Carolina also is tending purple. So we'll see what happens with them. Well, they said the same about North sure. Carolina, and North Carolina felt really red. And I was actually shocked too at how red Ohio was this time around. I'm not. I'm not. We've been we've been trending red the past few years. And I'm like, where? Where are these people? Because Southern Ohio. <laughs> it's all Southern Ohio. Yeah, you, it must be because I don't. I mean, I know a few people up here. In Cleveland I mean, the who the, the blue red, counties. But... The blue counties are. You know, um, I'm not going to say the county names because no one understands it. Besides, unless you live in Ohio. <laughs> but um, Cuyahoga, which is Cleveland, mm-hmm. Franklin, which is Columbus, Cleveland, Columbus, Cincy, Toledo, Youngstown. No, not even. Well, Toledo. Yeah, Toledo did. Yeah, Toledo um, went blue. Yeah. The thing, though, too, I think that and we Athens, think about Athens is, is... Athens is... Oh, and there. Athens, yeah. And maybe Dayton. Did Dayton? Maybe. Anyway. Probably. Long, long story made short. I do wonder, again, how much voter suppression is involved in the state. Could we also poor old Georgia in the future? You know, and you have to think about, too, how many people are just, like, disinterested who would be voting for Democratic candidates but just don't have the... Like, they, they're not being pushed enough to do so. Right. I, I, who knows? It could all flip in four years and... We'll see. Well, this was an extra long, juicy capitalism chat today. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we're we're heading towards the uh, more political realm. I know. Yeah. I get so maybe busy we'll get our own uh, talk show. Uh, AM. <laughs> hey, and if you're listening from Texas, which I don't think we have any Texas listeners, but if we do, we're sending our thoughts and prayers and love. I don't know if energy. we have any Ohio listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have any listeners in general. <laughs> But um, if you're going through that right now, we send our, our best. And yes. um, when this is over, you got to make sure you put things into action so this doesn't happen again. Fix so that power hold people, grid. Hold people to uh, you know, their actions and their consequences. So, All right. Well, another episode is in the bag. Uh, that's been another Thoughts of the Roundtable. And uh, peace out. Later. Later.